Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you join me for the Lord's Word of God today. And we celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, the one that is and was and is to come, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. And today's message is about Christians and our relationship with Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen? Amen. And so, if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 26. And here we find King Agrippa is questioning Paul. And we'll read verse 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You almost persuaded me to become a Christian. A Christian is a believer in Christ, the Messiah who came unto the Jews to redeem man back to God. And brothers and sisters, it's as a woman takes her husband's name, we took Christ's name to be married to him. Amen? Amen. And so there's an illustration, a parallel, if you will, in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. So please follow me over there. Start reading at verse 31. For this reason, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So, brothers and sisters, as the wife is to respect her husband, you and I have to respect Christ, Jesus, the Savior of the world. Amen? Amen. And it says here, as the husband and the wife become one, he says he's talking about the church as the church and Christ become one. The marriage of the Lamb is described as such. The wife or the bride of Christ is the church. The marriage is the eternal union of the church with Christ following the rapture. Amen? Amen. So now turn with me to the book of John chapter 14 and we'll start reading verse 20. At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So brothers and sisters, if you're saved today, you believe Jesus came incarnated from heaven, died and was buried and arose for your sins and mine, and you have repented of your sinful ways, Brothers and sisters, you have Jesus inside of you. Part of Jesus inside of you. Amen? Amen. Now in verse 21 it says, He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one that loves me and I will manifest myself inside of him. So brothers and sisters, it is not God's will that we continue to sin, but to obey his commandments, which is repentance. Amen? Amen. And he fills you with the Holy Spirit and you are destined for marriage in heaven, in the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Amen. Now let's look at chapter 15, verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch that is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So brothers and sisters, first it talks about someone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit in them, they're going to be cast into the fire, and that's hell fire, brothers and sisters. But if you are living for Jesus, and you got part of Jesus in you, he's telling you that if you're obeying the commandments, he's going to give you whatever you want, whatever you need, brothers and sisters. When you pray, the only reason why you won't give what you want is if you pray amiss, and that's pray for something that will cause you to sin. But if it's good for you, if you need it, God's going to give it to you. Amen? Amen. So now turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll read verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. You see, brothers and sisters, God is long-suffering. He's not like our earthly fathers who punish us soon. But at some point, He will chasten us to make us better. Amen? Amen. And as it says here, to keep us from being condemned with the world. Amen? Amen. So last, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll start reading in verse 16. Or do you not know that 
He who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Reading verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We must follow Jesus. If you're doing something wrong, you're serving yourself. Keep the course God gave you and keep the faith. If you're serving God, you will clean up your act. This time when Christ comes back, He's going to come back with a great vengeance on this world. Take his people home, called by his name, Christians. For we are not appointed to the wrath. Amen? Amen. Remember, Jesus did something so horrific for us. And now we have to do something for him. Give up our lives for him. Amen? Amen. As the word of God says in Romans 6, Because we are saved by grace, are we to continue to sin? God forbid. So brothers and sisters, let us continue carrying the cross given to us by taking Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him. And when Jesus comes for the bride, we will all be ready to meet him in the sky. Amen? Amen.